So Jesus is very concrete and clear, something that it's not always so. Sometimes he speaks in ways that are a bit mysterious and challenging, and there's some of that in the gospel today too. But he says, so point blank, if, if you love me, then you will keep my commandments. I mean, it's like an absolute. If you love me, then you keep my commandments. And so sometimes, from time to time, I have mentioned that people will ask me, you know, what do you want me to pray for you for, Father Mike? And I have said in the past, pray that I can love, right? Because love covers it all. When we love, we desire the good of the other. We desire all of the other truths. If you love me, says Jesus, you will keep my commandments. And I will give you another advocate, and that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit whom the world cannot accept because it does not see him. But we know the Holy Spirit, don't we? Blessed are those who believe even if they have not seen. The spirit of truth the world cannot accept. So my brothers and sisters, we are on this journey, on this journey here in our world today. And, and I wanna to say to you something I said a few weeks ago, see if you still know the right answer. He is risen. That's right, very good. That's for those who are visiting, that's our Easter greeting. He is risen. He has risen indeed. It's still the Easter season. Eight, six weeks in, a couple more weeks to go. We are a people of the resurrection. We are a people who praise the Lord for his victory over sin and death. One of the reasons that we have to give for our hope. You know what hope is? Hope is the confidence that we have in God. No matter how difficult the circumstances we face, God will see us through. And we believe, we believe in the resurrection. We believe in God's victory over sin and death. So it is Easter, it is the Easter season, and it is also Mother's Day, right? I said it at the beginning of Mass, I'll say it now and I'll say it at the end. Happy Mother's Day to all our moms here. We always get a little bump in attendance on Mother's Day too, so you know, people are, mom says, I want you to come to church with me, which is good. So some moms will get flowers today, right? And we had the flowers here before, uh, our icon of, of Blessed Mary, our mother. So some moms will get flowers. I was thinking about flowers today, thinking about flowers yesterday when I was coming up with my homily. And uh, a few years ago, I was driving on the interstate. I was gonna drive halfway across the country. I was gonna drive a long, long way. And uh, this is before cell phones. And I had my radio turned off and uh, it was kind of a melancholy drive. It was, a, it was a sad situation that was causing me to drive across the country. But I was driving across the country and uh, as I went, just kind of with the road passing by, mile after mile after mile in the silence, I started to notice something and what I began to notice was I noticed the wildflowers on the interstate. And, and I had never noticed the wildflowers before like I did that day. And I don't know how many of you all have ever really paid attention to the flowers on the interstate, but wildflowers grow very often along the, the highways. And so as I drove, it was mile after mile after mile. And I had this sort of melancholy mood that was over me. But as I drove after, through millions and millions and millions of flowers, I just, it just started to make me feel a little better. I just felt a little better about it for some reason. I noticed them and whenever I, now, now it seems like I notice the wildflowers all the time. And I, I kind of go back to that experience on, on some level of seeing them there and kind of paying attention to them and just the, the whole reality of them because it just got me thinking, you know, in the silence there as I drove through them all. You know, Saint, uh, Jesus says, consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor or spin. 
Yet I tell you, not even Solomon, and Solomon was the king after King David, David's son, Solomon. And Solomon was all about all of the money he could get and all of the reputation he could get. And Solomon had the finest clothes anybody could ever buy, right? And so Jesus says, consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. So the flowers have this kind of incredible beauty that is given to them by God, right? The flowers, millions and millions of them. I plucked one and thought I'd bring it up here and hold it in front of you. There were a couple ladies decorating flowers for a church that I used to be at. And they were talking about the fact that uh, the flowers were so, these, they had fake flowers. I don't like fake flowers. The church says no fake flowers. We're supposed to have real flowers. So they were talking about how great these fake flowers were. They were so good that you couldn't really tell they were fake, you know? And so they were debating. And somebody, one of the other ones said, somebody made these flowers, right? Say, somebody made these flowers. Well, somebody made this flower too, right? Somebody made this flower too, you know? And, and so that's what I was thinking about as I'm driving down the interstate, seeing the millions of flowers, that God knows every one of those flowers. If I pulled off the interstate and walked over and plucked one of those flowers and looked at it closely like I'm looking at this one, I would see the little veins in the leaves. I would see the little speckles on the petals. And I can look at my hand and I can see the veins in my hand, right? I can see the little freckles on my hand. And just God knows every one of them, right? Every single one of us. Every one of us. Every hair on our head. Everything about us. God knows. And he loves us. I will not leave you orphans. Have you ever heard that before? I read that in the gospel just a moment ago. I will not leave you orphans. So, my brothers and sisters, what is the reason for your hope? What is the reason for your hope? When you think about life and you think about the challenges of life, what is the reason for your hope? We have a lot of people these days, unfortunately, that don't believe in God. They don't believe. They don't believe that God created the flowers, that somebody made those flowers. They just think they, they just happened accidentally. But we don't believe that, right? We believe that they were made and that we were made and we were made by our Father. We are children of our Heavenly Father and these intricate and beautiful flowers. And when God made us, he looked at us and he said, very good. But we're also, we're also aware of, of the fallenness of this world and the brokenness of this world. And we heard a little bit about that in the, in, the, in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria. So they're up in Jerusalem on the mountaintop and they go down to the city of Samaria. So he went down to the city of Samaria and he proclaimed Christ to them. And with one accord, the crowd paid attention to what he was doing. And when they heard it and they saw the signs that he was doing, unclean spirits came flying out of the people and there was great joy in that city right is there great joy in this city let me ask you is there great joy in your pew is there great joy in the 30 inches of the pew that you're sitting on and what is the reason for our joy what is the reason for our hope? You know, here we are in the Easter season, remembering the resurrection. Here I am thinking about mom getting her flowers today. And when those flowers are given by her child or grandchild to her, you know, God made those flowers. And they're a gift from your child and they're a gift from God. And all the beauty of the world that we have been given the capacity to see. What is the reason for our hope? What is the reason for our hope? I hope you have some reasons for your hope ready at hand. I hope your heart is filled with reasons for hope. 
You know, when Philip was casting out the unclean spirits from the city of Samaria, I think about our little town here. I think about our little town and, you know, unfortunately there's unclean spirits right here in Bay St. Louis. The spirit of hopelessness, the spirit of nothingness, the spirit of death, the spirit of murder, right here, right here. But my brothers and sisters, we are to be a people of hope. There was great joy in that city, right? What is the reason for our hope? What is the reason for our joy? And so our reason for joy is that it is Easter. Our reason for joy is that we are children of a loving Father. Our reason for joy is that we have hope in the mercy of Almighty God. A reason for our joy. And the gospel today goes on to say, Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and the Father and I will come to you and I will give you another advocate to be with you always the advocate, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. My brothers and sisters, all of those should animate our being. They should animate our life. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. You know, we're in a bit of a spiritual battle here, aren't we? Say yes, Father Mike. We have the spirit of death. We have the spirit of nothingness. We have the spirit of nihilism. We have the spirit of murder. And we have the spirit of hope. And we have the spirit of joy. We have the spirit of mercy. We have the spirit of renewal. Jesus says, if you love me, what? You will keep my commandments. There is an infinite difference, as I have said many times, between striving to keep the commandments and failing and saying, I don't need to keep the commandments. There is an infinite difference. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we think about the Easter season, we think about our reason for hope, we think about our reason for joy, we pray for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we're going to notice the beauty of the flowers and the beauty of the world today, aren't we? We're going to know that we were made by God, and we're going to call on the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to dwell in us with love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control and perseverance and that we are not orphans, and that we have great reason for hope, and that we can share that with a world desperately in need, as Philip did. And maybe the evil spirits of nothingness will flow out of people, and the spirit of joy will flow into them, right? That's what we want. That's our reason for joy. That is our reason for hope. So today, my brothers and sisters, one of the reasons that we have for hope is the beauty of the world, the beauty of the flowers around us, I pray today that you would strive to keep God's commandments, that you would love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and that you would be a source of hope and joy to your family and to your community.